Microsoft Ads can be an incredibly successful asset to have with your online e-commerce business. You can see here the lifetime earnings from Microsoft Ads just for one of my businesses. It has generated me over £275,000 in revenue at a 2.85 return on ad spend, which is incredibly profitable. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down exactly how you can set up and structure a successful Microsoft advertising account, often known as Bing Ads or Bing Advertising. This is going to be a full guide, what campaigns to use, everything you need to know in this video to successfully launch your very first Microsoft Ads campaign. Now, just before we go any further, if you need any one-on-one -on -one help from me, whether it's with Microsoft Ads, whether it's with Google Ads, Meta Ads, please do drop me a message on Instagram. I'll leave a link in the top of the description. I only work with a few people at a single time. And if you are watching me for the very first time, my name is Patch and I've generated over $11 million worth of sales on e commerce platforms such as Shopify in the last six or seven years. Okay, so what do you need to get started? Obviously, you are going to need a Microsoft advertising account. Incredibly simple. You just want to Google search Microsoft advertising. If you've not got an account already, it will literally take you two, three minutes to make. It's essentially the same as making a Google ads account. Very simple. You just want to enter your website URL, your details, billing information. Make sure as well, you have a backup payment method with your ad account. I advise this with Google ads as well, because if your main payment method gets declined and you've not got a backup payment method then your ads could be paused your account could get suspended so me personally, I always have three payment methods on each account. So I have a backup and then a backup of the backup just to be safe. So at least get two payment methods on your ad account. As it's a very straightforward process to open an ad account, I'm not going to do that in this video because I don't need to make another one and it is very, very simple. So what you want to do after you've made your Bing or Microsoft advertising account, you are going to want to make a Microsoft Merchant Center account. So when you're in your dashboard like this, if you head over to the left hand side, you want to click on the Merchant Center button. Obviously, you can see I've already got two stores within the Merchant Center here. But if you're brand new, you're not going to have any. You just want to click Create Store and then go through that process to make a Merchant Center account. Now, what a Merchant Center account is, it is going to allow you to sync your Shopify products to this Merchant Center account. So it will pass all the data through to this Merchant Center, exactly the same as Google. And it is gonna allow you to run what are called shopping ads. And just to quickly show you, if you're not familiar with what shopping ads actually are, again, this is literally the same as Google, but if people are using Microsoft Bing and they're searching for a product, most of the time, the top of the search results are gonna be the shopping ad section. So you want your products to appear here because it is at the top of the search. You can compete with your competition on price. You can have better product images than your competitors, which is going to allow you to stand out. Essentially, you want to be dominating these shopping listings, which really do bring a very good return. As you saw at the start of the video, almost a 3x return with over a quarter of a million pounds in revenue just from shopping ads alone with Bing or Microsoft ads. So that is what this looks like. And you must have a merchant center account to run shopping ads if you don't have a merchant center account you can't run shopping ads simple as that okay so how exactly do you get your products on your merchant center account i obviously use shopify for all my businesses all the people i teach and my clients always use shopify and you can get a very good app it's called the simprosis google shopping feed but this app also does microsoft ads it does pinterest ads a bunch of other stuff but this is the app you want which will allow you to push your products over to microsoft ads it doesn't cost much six seven dollars a month for this app I think, but it's a must have if you want to run shopping ads. Once you've downloaded the app, you can go over to the Microsoft shopping settings here. You can link your Microsoft account by simply logging in and linking the accounts. Again, it takes 20, 30 seconds. It's very straightforward. Once you've done that, all of your products will automatically be pushed over to your Merchant Center account. If you ever add any new products to your Shopify store, they'll automatically be pushed through to Merchant Center. So it's not like you need to go and manually add your new products across. It automatically refreshes, it automatically sinks so essentially once it's set up you really don't have to do anything from this end the only other thing you really 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 want to do is implement conversion tracking and conversion tracking very straightforward it essentially allows your microsoft ad account to track the conversions or sales that are coming from microsoft ads so for example here 3700 conversions tracked if i didn't have conversion tracking enabled this would be zero it would report no revenue from microsoft ads and you're going to want to have this because if you don't there's no 
no way to measure if these are doing well or not for you. Without this as well, Microsoft and their machine learning are not going to know which products are performing best. So they're not going to know how much budget to push to certain products because if they have this conversion data, they'll be able to see, okay, this particular product is outperforming everything else. So they'll push more of your budget to that product because it is outperforming everything else. And that is how you build a very profitable ad account over time. And that is how you get really consistent results with this platform and to do this again you want to go back onto the Symprosis shopping feed app on Shopify click the tracking tags section at the top you can do this for Google Ads as well Facebook and Pinterest like I said but you want the Microsoft tag section and again I've already set this up but you just want to go through the process here link your account correctly again and you know you've done it correctly because it will show as active here all very straightforward if you need specific help on these certain steps Symprosis have an entire website for of videos that allow you to essentially if you need help step-by-step -step guides for each individual step so I'm sure there is a video on their website if you need a step-by-step -step guide to do this but you really shouldn't again it's a 30 second process you click a few buttons and then it will be done for you okay in terms of account structure I only run shopping ads on Microsoft ads simply because it is what brings the most consistent results the highest return on ad spend and requires the less amount of time for me which is very important. I'm a busy person. I have obviously a lot more ad spend going into other platforms like Google and Meta, which then require much more of my attention. So having Microsoft ads perform very well Yes, it is at less spend. That's simply because less people use Bing as a search engine, but it's a great asset to have to give you consistent daily results. So that is why I only use shopping ads. And depending on your catalog size, you might only need one campaign. I personally have three. We've broken this down into high ticket products. We've got a new bucket, which is essentially low ticket or anything that isn't high ticket. And because recently I've been adding more and more new products to my website, I've decided to give a third campaign just for these brand new releases. And and you can see here the high ticket has been performing the best out of everything nearly getting a 4x return on ad spend in the entire lifetime of this account which is just incredibly profitable okay so let's go through and create a shopping campaign step by step it is a little bit more complicated than google ads simply because there are a few more settings and things you need to change to ensure this is all set up correctly so let's get started hit the create button this will allow you to create a new campaign again straight away this looks different to google ads because we are wanting to make a shopping campaign you want to click the sell products as you can see advertise products from your merchant center store now this will prompt you to either make a performance max campaign standard shopping or smart shopping now now I like to use standard shopping it is the simplest one it really again requires literally none of my attention so that's essentially why I use it perhaps if you've got more budget to commit to this or if you just want to test something else there's nothing wrong with testing smart shopping or performance max some will work better for other businesses but you can see from the results I've only ever run standard shopping so that is what we are going to go with here now very very importantly you want to click this search button here now this doesn't 100% ensure your ads are going to show just on the search bar or the search results page should I say we'll speak a little bit more about it, that in a minute because Microsoft are very bad and very sneaky at doing something which could cost you thousands of wasted ad spend but I'm going to show you how to avoid that in a minute but you really want to click this button here audience ads is just going to give you terrible quality traffic hit continue you can name this campaign whatever you want perhaps just have standard shopping somewhere in the title so you know what it is campaign priority doesn't matter unless you're running products in multiple shopping campaigns which is not the setup I advise for this so we'll just leave that as a low priority make sure your merchant center is selected here there's no need for me to be ticking either of these boxes i like to select all products because once the campaign is made you can then hand pick which products you want to be advertising and then because you've just set up your conversion tracking through the sim process app you can just use your accounts include in conversion setting now this will just use the conversion tracking that we've set up there's no need for any other actions here and this will ensure your new campaign is going to be tracking conversions correctly now next up you want your target locations now it's very important here because if you're submitting your product feed to merchant center in the United States for example you're not going to be able to run shopping ads for the United Kingdom you will need to set up a separate feed within the Symprosis app per country to 
run ads essentially to multiple countries. But again, with this platform, I like to keep things as simple as possible. I literally just run ads to the United States and obviously by default, it's targeting everywhere. We just wanna make sure that we click this bottom option here and then we click United States. Make sure you click target here. And very importantly, you wanna select people in your targeted locations, again, to avoid wasted ad spend for people that potentially might be outside of the USA. Now, if you wanted to, perhaps you've got a high ticket business and you want it to gear more of your ad spend to people on computers or desktop, you can adjust the bids here. I like to leave this as the default setting. You've got a few more options here. You've got the start and end date you don't want to put an end date you want this campaign to run evergreen if you know perhaps you've got better days for your business perhaps you have much better performance over the weekend you can change some settings here to make sure your ads show on certain days but again simple is best with this platform so i leave that again at default now this is a very very important setting here that again they've left right at the bottom fairly hidden you want to select this bottom option here again this is similar to the search ads and audience network thing we selected at the start yes they recommend this top option but they literally say you're going to be showing on additional partner traffic websites you're going to have higher reach and a lower cost per click there really is a reason for that if you're paying a lower cost per click from this section here the traffic is awful and i'll show you in a minute the results and wasted ad spend i have had from showing ads across what microsoft call the audience ads or the audience network should i say it's mind-blowing so please make sure this section is ticked here because this will ensure your ads mostly will appear on the search results up here. Now, next step, you can set your daily budget to whatever you want this to be. Bing ads or Microsoft ads really don't require much of a budget to get going. Let's say you're spending $500 or pounds a day on Google ads. You could start this at 50 pounds a day, so 10% of your Google budget. If performance is good, you simply increase it. It is as simple as that. Bid strategy is fairly important here. Believe it or not, despite wanting conversions, I go for maximized clicks simply because the quality of traffic I receive from Microsoft just converts incredibly well. I don't know if that's anything to do with the older demographic that use Bing. So to ensure I'm getting as much of this high quality traffic as possible, I'm using the maximize clicks bid strategy. I have tried target ROAS. It didn't perform anywhere near as good as maximize clicks. And I do like to set a maximum CPC. This is something you can tweak over time. If you know an average CPC that you get on Google ads, for example, just put that in here. So we'll just put it at 0.5 for now. And it's fairly simple. If you your campaign doesn't spend its daily budget on this bid strategy you simply want to just slowly raise that maximum cpc until your campaign starts to spend its full daily budget then you just want to go to the last step review everything here make sure you've done it correctly and then once you click go live your campaign will be ready and it will be launched ready to go okay now this might be the most important part of the video let's just compare google and microsoft ads for one quick minute on google ads you can opt out of showing on their display network which is essentially ads placed across the entire internet on millions of different websites which usually give you very poor traffic with microsoft ads you can't do that they essentially force you to spend some of your budget on these terrible you know websites yes it'll give you a lot of traffic but it'll be very, very poor quality traffic. So let's just compare this here. We are on the entire lifetime stats or the data of this account. You can see from search ads, we've had a 310% return, really, really profitable. And obviously the search ads are these here. This is what we were looking at. This is what we want. Whereas if we jump back here, you can see on the audience ad section, it has only got me a 37% return, which basically means for every pound or dollar I've put into this, I've only got 37 cents or P back which is just awful it's obviously running at a loss and that just really just proves how terrible these audience ads are now just to show you the spend on audience ads is almost 10 grand since this ad account has been live yes it's had me 56 conversions but at a loss at 37 percent ROAS it's just not good so what can we do about this there are things you can put in place which will minimize the amount of spend that goes towards these audience ads now you want to head over to your campaign once you click your campaign you want to go down to the settings tab here on the left hand side you want to go down to the website and ip address exclusions area now this will allow you to put urls and website addresses in here that you don't want your ads to appear on this is for the audience ads so the more urls you put in here the less spend you're going to have wasted on those audience ads now straight away before you've got any data you are going to want to put these top three in here this will drastically help and you're also going to want to put in the play.google.com 
platform because despite having over a thousand website URLs in here, the majority of the audience ad spend will naturally go towards these three websites. So from the beginning, once you've made your campaign, go back into this settings section and put those four website URLs in there. And over time, for example, once every week or two, I will add more websites in this section here to exclude. And I'll quickly show you now how exactly you know what websites your ads are being shown on so you know which URLs to exclude. Now, let's go over the left-hand side here. You wanna click the reporting section here. Top right, simply search website URL. Click here, and this is gonna be a report that is gonna show you where your ads are showing. So if we go to all time here, let's just click this column icon here this is very useful as well if you click the network section here let's just drag this up somewhere here so we can easily see it you can see on this network column it's going to show you the value as audience and these are going to be the websites that are essentially going to be the wasted ad spend sorry i'm terrible explaining this but you get the idea anything that has audience here is going to be something you are going to want to exclude so it's going to give you the website url if we just filter from spend and you'll see which websites i've spent the most money on obviously these are okay up here because these are the search results anything with audience is something you want to exclude so edge.microsoft.com if you scroll over here, you know, two and a half thousand pounds of ad spend just on this. And it's only got me, well, what you can see here, you can see 315 pound cost per conversion, which is just obviously a loss. So every week or two, you want to just grab the URLs here, copy and paste them into the settings section I've just shown you. And eventually spend will really only go towards the search ads which are the profitable things and this is where you want your ads to show i really hope i've explained that properly and good enough it is quite straightforward if you have any questions about it drop a comment down below but i can't stress enough this needs to be done to avoid wasted ad spend i've just shown you almost 10 grand of wasted ad spend so make sure you put this in place and make it part of your routine every week or two to add more urls into that exclusions section and that is pretty much it you just want to let your campaigns run for a couple of weeks in the first few days they probably won't spend but don't be alarmed give it a week or two to you know just gain some traction and then once it starts to spend you'll be able to adjust your cpc limits you'll be able to exclude products that are perhaps not performing very well this advertising platform is often overlooked and people don't really talk about it but it really is brilliant it's very profitable you can see again just this campaign lifetime it's got me 400% return. It's very low maintenance. You're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But again, it's a great asset to have and a great avenue of traffic for your business. And I do recommend this to everyone I work one on one with to implement. So like I said at the start of the video, if you are interested in working one on one with me, I'll leave a link to my Instagram down below. Just drop me a message. I do respond to everyone. Expect videos soon for Pinterest, Google and Meta as well on how I structure everything there. Subscribe if you are new. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.